Welcome to Paintbrush and Ivories, the podcast for artists and curious creatives that connects creativity with the heart and soul. I'm Michelle Walker and I am flying solo today. Jennifer has the launch of a new program and I wanted to talk to you about something that's probably more specific to visual artists and that's this concept of navigating commissions. My first question to you is, have you done any? And if so, do you like them? And is it part of your repertoire in your art practice? If you haven't and you're curious about them, then perhaps some of what I'm going to cover today is going to be useful for you. I think the first question you need to ask is, is it for you? Because not everyone wants to do commissions or enjoys commissions. And I think it's worth thinking about how does it work with your way of operating in your art practice and your personality, perhaps some of the things that you like to do and what you like to avoid if possible. And I think that's part of considering whether or not you're going to navigate commissions as you know an ongoing thing. One of the first things that if you are a possible or a yes, then I think it's really important that you state upfront somewhere on your website that you are available for commissions, that that is something you do do or that you're interested in having a conversation about. The client that you might attract is obviously going to like what you've done and perhaps the piece they really wanted has been sold or the price point wasn't quite right or maybe the palette wasn't right for the room that they had in mind. So there can be lots of things that the client comes to you with or having loved your work, they just might have a space in their house and want to open it up to you to create something beautiful for them. And those kinds of commissions are just fabulous. I think it's important to think about what it is that you can expect in terms of the steps and think those through, have them in your mind so that you can speak to your client or your prospective client about what it involves and you can be clear about all the things you need to cover off to keep you happy and safe and also the same for your clients so that it's a great outcome. So I start around the idea of the contracting phase. So you're having a bit of a conversation, you're outlining to the prospective client what might be involved in a commission and they have said yes. So what is it that you need to think about if you're going to do this? And it can be as simple as an exchange of emails with some agreements about a number of elements. And the things that I think are really important to cover, and these are kind of like your terms, you want to give a description of the work that you're going to produce. You may want to talk about visual references. So you might have some images. For example, I'm doing a work at the moment and the client had a lovely watercolour that they really loved and they wanted me to use that as a bit of an inspiration point. And in fact, it kind of gave me the ideas and the direction for the palette that she wanted. So what else is going to be included in that contracting? I would suggest outlining what the creative process steps are. So what is it that you'll be doing and when? And partly to give yourself clarity, but also for you to be able to set the expectations with your client about when they can expect certain things and what sort of process do you want to undertake and when they get involved. You want to clearly outline what the payment stages are. I personally think if I've got to go out and buy you know, $1,000 or more worth of canvas for a project, then I'm going to want an upfront payment. And I usually ask for 50% upfront. And then my steps are having got the contract all settled, I get underway and I will show the client images when I think it's 80 or 90% done. And if I've got any questions before I get to that point, I'll be backwards and forwards with them on the phone or via email asking them more specific direction. So I might find when I come to do a uh, commission work that I actually am not exactly sure when they said this word, what it meant. And I've just done recently Jennifer's fourth book cover. So I've been very lucky to be invited by Jennifer to do her series of book covers. And they were very specific imagery because of the content that she was covering in the book. And in some cases, I needed to go back and get clarification before I showed her an image just because I thought I might be heading in the wrong direction. 
I always make it clear to a client when I send them the imagery that I'm really open to them giving me direction in terms of love it, don't like it, too much of this, not enough of that. It's really open at that stage. And I bring my heart to that process to make sure that I am, you know, doing the best work I can, but that I'm not kind of hanging on to the outcomes that I really would like them to have a role and feel feel really able to give me redirection. Um, I don't ask if it's completely off the you know, off the path of what they were expecting, because I feel like it's usually taken care of in the earlier stages. I'm pretty clear about the direction that I need to take, at least initially. So that's sort of the final stage then, once someone's seen imagery when it's 80 or 90% done and gives me direction, tweaks, or just a general blessing about how I'm going, I then deliver and that's when the final 50% payment happens. Now, some people do different payment stages for their commissions. They might do 30, 30, 40, you know, it's up to you, but really just be really clear with the client about what it is. And I go for the two payments because it just is one less lot of invoicing. So I'm very pragmatic about that. Another aspect that you want to include in the contracting process is ownership and copyright, because even though you're being commissioned, this is still your work. And as I did a a painting for a lady, knowing that she wanted to use it for her branding, when I gave her the painting, when she purchased it from me, I also included her use of it for her branding. So she could take a digital image, she was able to then reproduce that in whatever form she needed for her branding. So it is important that we, you know, that we cover the aspects of the use that the client wants. You know, if it's a painting for an internal space, house, office, then that's pretty simple. But when in this case where the woman that contracted me for the work really loved something I'd done, I did something very similar and with the intention, and I was really clear that she was going to be using it for her branding. So when I saw her online, she had the image projected as her background on her Zoom calls for her seminars and masterclasses. So that was, in, you know, that's included and that sort of needs to be part of the conversation. But as an artist, you never lose your copyright. You retain your copyright. And I think it's worth checking out what the legal details are of that in your jurisdiction around artist copyright and ownership. Another aspect that you want to cover in your contracting is just about delivery. So in some cases, most of my commissions have actually been for people overseas. So I'm contacting in, in conversation with them via email and then I'm posting it internationally. But if you're local or close to local, there might be a pickup arrangement or you might offer, if it's a large format, you might actually offer to deliver it to them and that needs to be clear about whether there's an additional payment for that delivery. Timeframes, in some cases, it might be open. People might say, look, we're not in a hurry, but we'd really love something when you get a chance. But If they've got a specific event or if there's something in particular like a birthday that they want to get it for, that needs to be included. The other aspects are probably the more tricky ones, the ones we would much prefer to avoid, which is how do we handle disputes? How do we handle the termination of a contract? What happens when you take a work through to the 80%, you've made the outlay in terms of buying the materials, the canvas, And it gets to a point where at the 80% mark, you show it to them and they're really not happy. And so you make some changes and they're still really not happy. And it doesn't feel like it's going to be easily resolved. What is your process then? So, for example, you might have in your agreement that the deposit, if it's 50%, is forfeited or can be transferred to another work on your website for equal value you can make an arrangement with how you deal with that, but you need to have that included in the contract. It can be a challenge if you lose the communication flow and the understanding. And so it is really important to put it down in writing about what are the steps for the contract termination. 
I've got a great website that I'll put in the show notes, which I found really useful for people in Australia in terms of having a template for contracts for commission work. And I know that because of the sort of legal backing of that, that's really only going to be relevant to listeners in Australia. But it's also important to just feel around and find out in your jurisdiction, is there such a thing? Is there a template for a commission work that you can use? And in which case it'll probably take care of those areas of how to handle disputes and how to terminate a contract. So that's a contracting phase and included the last item I want to cover is pricing. And this I know from having done Money Mojo for artists and how speaking to many artists about how they do money and where pricing for artwork can be a really difficult aspect to their art practice and their art business. So there's different schools of thought. Some people go a little bit lower than their normal price because they feel like it's a certain bit of income. That's one body of thinking, and I understand that. Others go higher because it's producing a work very specific, very tailored to a particular customer client. So that idea of whether you go low, whether you go high, or whether you match what your normal pricing is for your artwork is entirely up to you. You're going to have to feel into it and feel what kind of resonates with you and what feels good. I go somewhere between on the money and a little bit higher just because there is a very specific way of me producing work when I'm working for commission and I don't have 100% freedom and so I'm very mindful and there can be time of what sort of goes backwards and forwards and I need to allocate a bit of budget for that. It's really good to have a schedule of prices and if you have them in your head, that's great. But if you can't hang on to them in your head in terms of different sizes and for different products, whether it's, you know, an oil on panel or it's an acrylic on canvas, it's, you know, a 30 centimetre or 12 inch square piece versus uh, a metre 46 inch square. I hope I got my mass right there. <laughs> Just have a think. If you don't already have a schedule of prices, have a think about what that would look like because... You may find yourself talking to someone at a barbecue, you know, in your next exhibition launch or in your art group, and someone says, I'd really like to know what something of this size would cost. And it's really good to be in a position to be clear and professional, and it comes across really well that the client understands then that you're that you're clear about your costings. And it just allows the client or the prospective client to be confident in that. So that's all about pricing. And if you have issues, then please find my Money Mojo for Artists and come and join me on that. Because if that is something you get stuck on, I really want to be able to help you overcome that particular issue. The other area that I want to cover is more the sort of communications aspects. Some of the key points that I think about when I'm entering into the possibility of some commission work is trying to get as absolutely clear as I can about what my client wants. And that might mean spending an hour asking lots and lots of questions. So for example, a recent body of work that I've just done with a client who I know very well as a friend, but this is a new relationship for us she took me through the house and the rooms where she wanted the work hung, which was great. And I took photos of those. And then I spent a lot of time asking about style. So I had images of my work on my iPad and we flicked through and I got her to tell me, stop at the ones that you like and tell me what aspect you like about them. And so we did that for maybe 15 minutes, just going through all my works. And this friend had actually seen an exhibition of mine 12 months before and had said to me at the exhibition, I've got big blank spaces in my house that I really, really want to get you to do some artwork. You know, it took a year to mature and maturate to the point where we were sitting in her lounge room, looking at the spaces and looking at the other artwork and the furnishings. So it made a difference me being in present in the house. So even though I'd visited the house in the past, it had been a while 
and I got to see her new furnishings and I got to see where the placement was. So I was asking her about the palette that she liked and the kinds of feelings that she wanted to get from the work. Did she want something that was bold and sassy? Did she want something that was calming? Did she want something that was, you know, vibrantly contrasting? Did she want something that was very harmonious? Lots and lots of questions, even to the point where I thought I'd run out of questions. And then one of the last questions I asked actually changed a little bit how I was seeing the commission work. So You can never ask too many questions in the commissioning process right up front before you've really got very far, because that for me feels like a very important investment in your time and in their time to get really, really clear about what they're imagining, because that helps you manage their expectations and your own about what it is that you're producing. And it really helps reduce the chances that you're going to end up with some kind of dispute about them not loving the work. So I feel that there's a lot of things to think about. And obviously, when you get in the process, you've had all the contracting sorted, that's been exchanged. And it could be a simple, you know, it doesn't have to be a formal written contract, but it can be an exchange of emails. As long as you get a reply that says, yes, I agree to these terms and these conditions and this price, and please go ahead, send me your bank details so I can pay you your deposit. That's the kind of thing that you want. So once you've got all that and you're actually making the work, have fun with it. Because I feel like this is the area where some artists, when I speak to them about do they do commissions or not, if I get the not, it's usually a kind of a vehement no. And when I've asked further questions around that, it's usually about the pressure that they feel. And I understand this because even though I enjoy commissions, I do feel a little bit of pressure about doing them because, you know, the thoughts there or what if this doesn't work out? You know, (laughs) what if what I I produce is not acceptable or is seen as less than what they were expecting and hoping for? So I don't give a lot of airtime and oxygen to that thinking, but I am mindful that for some artists that is too much, that pressure of, you know, having to produce something that looks a certain way. And I I kind of want to reflect on something that's just happened for me with this latest body of commission works that I've been doing and that I did four commission works for the client, three of which were very much of my current style that my client friend fell in love with at the exhibition. But there was another body of work which she had seen maybe four or five years ago. The work itself had already sold. So when she saw it on my social media, she said, I love it, I love it, I want it. And I had to say, I'm really sorry. It's been sold and is heading its way to the US. So she was very disappointed. But when she got me in to do these big abstract landscapes, she asked me to do a version of that earlier painting. And I used to have a style a number of years ago that was much more, how do I describe it as new agey, Buddha face, goddessy kind of paintings. I don't do that style anymore. And this work was from that era. And I felt I struggled a wee bit with being able to bring myself back into the way that I made this painting and the imagery that I was using. And luckily enough, I had a reference image because my friend had fallen in love with this other painting and she really wanted something very similar for her bedroom. So I'm feeling that sometimes that can happen where our artwork moves on and our client likes something from a few years ago and they ask us to go back and recreate something. And that can be a challenge. So that can be a source of pressure And I'm finding when I come to do certain commission works, this particular latest example is one where I did notice the difference. I did have to change my process back to something that in essence isn't the way I'm painting anymore in terms of imagery. But I was happy to do it because what a blessing and what a beautiful bit of positive feedback where a client says, I just adore this thing you did. Can you do it for me? And the answer is yes, in most cases. And in this particular case, I was delighted because, you know, I had these other three big works for her living lounge room and she wanted this special one for her bedroom. And so, of course, I said yes. So 
I think that aspect to the dynamic between being engaged and commissioned to do a work and perhaps being asked to do something that might be a previous body of work and you may have moved on, it's up to you to decide is that something that you want to revisit. And it may be a yes this time and a no next time for various reasons. But think that through because that does come up. And, you know, I've only been doing commissions really for four years, I think. And I've done artwork for hanging on walls and I've done artwork for reproducing in branding and for book covers. And I think that all those different aspects have different questions around them for you. And depending on what your client is after, it's worth being clear about what this means for you and your practice. So I feel that, you know, for me, I embrace it, especially when I get to work with people I know and make commission work for people you don't know is a really lovely way to get to know them. And I also feel that it's a real honour to do something for someone that they really wish to have in their home, in their office, in their business work space. I, I just think that that is a fabulous opportunity. So if you're thinking that you might be interested in commission work, I just encourage you to think through some of these points and find out what works for you. It is something that may not be for you and be open to that because it really does change the way that you come to the canvas it has a different dynamic about it but if you're curious and I would say lean in especially if you feel really comfortable having conversations with people about what they love and I do I adore that part of the process just finding out what lights them up what they see that brings them joy because that's part of the essence that I'm trying to capture into the artwork all right I think I've covered everything that I can think about what I've learned from navigating commission artwork and I'd love it if you're listening. So thank you very much for joining me in the episode today. And if you've got any thoughts that you want to add or if you've got any questions about commissioning artwork, please reach out to me, michelle at michellewalker.com.au or you can find me on Insta and Facebook as at michellewalkerart. I hope you have a wonderful week. Until next time we talk again. Bye for now.